Welcome to our next class. This is photography work form two. So below or above is linked the photography work lesson in form one. So you can look at that if you had not looked at it so that you're able to uh, proceed with this subject. And so as a reminder, you can make use of the subtitles. No, sorry, not the subtitles, but the subtopics at the bottom of your uh, video frame. Yeah, so we are going to look at photography work from two. And uh, it's important to remember that a photograph is an image of an object, person or scene, recorded by a camera on a light sensitive film of paper. So in this section, we are going to uh, look at the types of photographs and parts of a photograph. And then we are going to interpret photographs by estimation of actual sizes of features, sketching photographs, studying and describing natural and human features and activities on photographs. So types of photographs. We have the ground photographs which are taken from the ground and we have the aerial photographs. I repeat, we have the ground photographs and we have the aerial photographs. So they also have their own subtypes. So we have the, the photographs taken from the ground. They are of two types. The ground horizontal taken with the camera at the same level as the object. And we have the ground oblique which is taken from the ground with the camera slanted or held at an angle. So digging deeper into the ground horizontal photographs, we have two types, which is one ground close up, which is taken from the ground with a camera focused on one particular object. And we have the ground general view photographs, which are taken from the ground with a camera focused on general scenery. Take a time, take a moment to review that again so that it doesn't confuse you. We have the aerial photographs, as I, we had mentioned earlier, which are taken from the air. And there are of two types. You have the aerial obliques, which are taken from the air with the camera tilted towards the ground. And we have the vertical area photographs, which are taken from the air with the camera directly above the object or scenery. We are going to look at the parts of a photograph. Assuming this um, rectangle is a picture you are holding on your hand, a photograph you are holding on your hand, uh, you can subdivide it in those sections. And we have the left background, we have the central background, we have the right background. We have the left middle ground, we have the central middle ground, we have the left middle ground. We have the left foreground, we have the central foreground, and we have the right foreground or vice versa. So I forgot to uh, place a uh, example photo so that we can dissect it. And so you can try that out on your own. And our last subtopic is interpretation of photographs. Before which we, are, we can take a short break. Well, welcome back. So we are looking at interpretation of photographs. So this means so to explain the meaning of the objects or features on a photograph. It actually, it actually involves the following, uh, determining the title. Uh, photographs show human activities, physical, natural catastrophes, for example, nomadic pastoralism, for that. So when deciding the title, you examine the photograph carefully and apply the knowledge you have learned in geography so far to determine a suitable title for the photograph. Estimating time. So in the tropics, the shadows are short at noon and longest in the morning and afternoon. So from um, analyzing a photograph, you're able to tell uh, what time the photo was taken. 
we have estimating seasons. So dry seasons, you can see bright clear skies, dry vegetation, harvesting, light clothes. Uh, this is important um, to note. Like when you're given a photo you and you're able to identify this, you can be able to tell uh, what season the photo was taken from or in. So we have uh, determining compass direction. It is in the morning in the shadow of a flagpole is cast to the left. The photographer is facing north. And if cast to the right, he was facing south. And uh, we can look at uh, interpretation of physical features on photographs. That is relief, drainage, vegetation, soil. So uh, you can see I'll give you some so that you can read the rest from your geography app from your play store so let's see let me see what i can give you ah these are all human activities also give it to you so let me give you some few maybe give you relief so flat uh relief uh, and you see flatland it's an indication of rice crop irrigation well flat when you see the indication of rice crop irrigation combine avista swarm so that you can tell it's a the relief is a flat land i hope that doesn't confuse you so uh when you see on a photograph you see t a wheat you can know when you see rapids waterfalls interlocking spars you can tell that the landscape could be hilly or um a highland uh, maybe i can give you let me see what else i can give you maybe vegetation when you see indigenous species dense undergrowth trees growing a fastly different species of trees you can tell that's a nat that's natural vegetation and if you can see exotic species in rows little undergrowth same species from a photograph you can tell that's uh planted vegetation I think that's that's uh, given you quite a lot so you can look at this the rest uh on your own or you can consult the geography app so human activities um let's see what i can give you maybe i can just give you agriculture so uh when you see from that photograph you see people preparing land or weeding uh, or harvesting uh, you can tell that um, this crop farming as a human activity. Uh, I think that's that's not hard to understand. Um, if you see maybe a piece of extensive piece of land, it's and it's just tea. Uh, you can or you look at the map and you not uh, the photograph you notice the settlement is nucleated within farms. You can tell that's a plantation. That's plantation farming. So we can maybe look at sketching diagrams. Uh, how to sketch a diagram. You draw a rectangle, the same size as a photograph. Divide it into squares using faint lines. Uh, subdivide the photograph into nine sections as we had reviewed the parts of a, of a photograph. Maybe you can rush back there so that you can recall because we're ending the lesson about this point let's look back uh, here so these are the next nine sections that you divide your photograph in so i hope you saw that you could post the video there and so let's look at before we get to photography um we can then insert the features in the exact position using the simple lines being guided by the squares and then you have to label the important features that is vegetation land use maybe transport communication and then you finally give the sketch a suitable label as we discussed earlier and so this is the end of um, our photography work form two and so our next topic should be statistical methods form two work same case i uh, review the statistical methods in form one so that we're able to uh, grasp since the statistical methods so in form two is just a continuation of 
uh, statistical methods in Fuma. So we are not going to define anything, we're just going to dive in. So take some time and look at that.